Here we go. I think we're going to be live. I'm assuming we're going to be live. It's Z Dog. It's Saturday, what, May 15th, 5 15. There's two fives in that. What does that mean? Numerology. What does numerology mean? The Fibonacci sequence. What does that mean? Conspiracy, nanobots, vaccines, COVID. We're going to talk about all this stuff, except for anything I just said, except for COVID. Welcome to the show. Um, <laughs> <laughs> am I am I canceled yet? Is it happening? Um, listen, there is so much going on right now, and I've got your comments here, so I want you to leave them. Um, there's so much going on so fast with regards to the pandemic, and we've been talking about this for over a year now. I'm dead tired of it. I don't know about y'all, but we got to bring it through the finish line because otherwise, you know, fumble right before the end zone. Don't want to do that. So let's talk about it. Um, we want to talk about mask guidance from the CDC. I want to talk about vaccines for kids and some of the stuff we've talked about, but we really want to dive into it in a rational alt middle way in taking your comments as well. Welcome everybody. I see you commenting and let's do it. We're also going to talk about the contagion of fear that is very hard to unwind. Uh, it's really funny because, you know, again, from the beginning, so much of this has been tribalized you know, the media, and then you got the politicians, and then there's Trump, and then there's Biden, and then there's this guy on Facebook, and then there's that. And then you start to see, okay, there's patterns emerging here. Yes, masks have been totally politicized and tribalized. Vaccines have been politicized and tribalized. Whether the COVID pandemic itself is bad or the response to the pandemic is bad has been tribalized. So let's just try to come together for a second and understand we're all trying to get through this in a reasonably intact way. And let's look at stuff from that and see where we are and see where we're going. Because honestly, if I'm being completely transparent, the pandemic is in its final, I mean, it's it's effectively done in the United States if we don't, if something crazy doesn't happen, which is very unlikely, not always, but it's probably unlikely. So let's start with the state of the pandemic. Cases are dropping, deaths are dropping. The temperatures are warming up because of spring. And the CDC, which is always seems to be behind by about six months on any guidance, they'll get tons of criticism, all kinds of public health people will be like, what are they doing? And then all of a sudden they'll be like, here. Um, that's what it feels like, right? So just a few weeks ago, um, Dr. Walensky from CDC was saying, hey, by the way, I have this impending sense of doom. Like if I'm speaking off script here, I'm gonna choke up a bit. I think we're all gonna die. Um, unless we, unless you behave yourself, unless you put on your mask, continue to distance, continue to obey whatever it is that is to be obeyed, and otherwise everything could fall apart, right? And of course, there's some people who are like, ooh, oh yeah, I mean, we've been so afraid for so long, this feels right, I'm gonna continue to, you know, double mask and do all this other stuff, and, 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 but the vaccine I'm still a little nervous about because it was never clear that I could get vaccinated and then move on with life. It was like I could get vaccinated and then continue to cower in fear with everybody else. So I don't quite understand the point and it hasn't been communicated clearly. And I just don't, I don't, I don't see it. So it was really not great messaging. Let's be completely honest. And this is me editorializing, but I, I feel very strongly about this. It was not good messaging. We've said that quite a few times on the show. And even at the time, I did a piece called Impending Doom Rounds, where it was about, is this really what's happening? And I remember telling my supporters, we do supporter shows every other night or something, live shows for my paying subscribers. And um, they're a pretty hardcore gang of like, you know, a bunch of people. And I said, listen, a few weeks later, I'm going to check back in with, was there impending doom? Did that happen? And if it did, I'm gonna eat a lot of crow publicly. I'm gonna say, well, I was wrong again. I've been wrong about a few things. I was wrong again. But if I'm not, I'm gonna hold CDC accountable for generating that fear, which is hard to unwind. And so I'm holding CDC accountable for generating that fear, which is now hard to unwind. Like, where, where was the impending doom? The smart money even then was saying, uh, vaccines are spinning up. The vaccines are highly effective, highly effective, like ridiculously effective in terms of preventing severe disease, hospitalization, death, but also like every, almost every other vaccine, transmission, 
and asymptomatic carrier. So even if you test positive after getting the vaccine, your chances of having, and finally Walensky said this actually outright, your chance of having a high viral load and spreading it to other people is really low. So vaccines don't just help you not die of COVID, even though the risk is not that high, but it's there, right? So if you don't wanna die of COVID, if you're in a high risk group or anybody, honestly, that vaccine is gonna help you not do that. But on top of that, it has this community effect, which is you don't transmit. So you're less likely to be a spreader or even a super spreader or any kind of spreader because you've had the vaccine, you're generating very high levels of antibodies, which is why the vaccines are so good, even against variants. Variants, are, you'll always see on the news, well, the variants are um, less neutralized by antibodies. So you need like five times more antibodies to neutralize the Brazilian variant or whatever the number actually is, right? And then you look at what the vaccines actually produce in terms of antibodies, and it's like 10X the antibodies you need because they're so good. And they, you know, multifocal antibodies against that spike protein, it's, they're very, very good. I am shocked at how good they were. I didn't think they would be this good. I thought they'd be meh, 40% efficacy, kind of flu shot-ish. I was completely wrong. I mean, blows me away. And on top of that, so variants right now, the best way to fight variants is get vaccinated because then there's less viral replication. And then the unlikely chance that a vaccine escape variant will happen where it's made enough changes that it can escape vaccine while still staying viable as a dangerous to deadly virus, that's hard to do because there's only so much change you can make to that molecule before the vi virus itself is like, I'm out, it, it can't function. So there's a limit, right? It's not like it's just gonna keep mutating in some scary way, like the, sometimes the media will make you think. Um, it has a bandwidth, and Dr. Monica Gandhi was on the show talking about this, that it's only so much that it's gonna do, which again, brings you to the question of like, do we need booster shots for variants? Maybe, maybe not. Will we need a booster shot to keep our antibody levels high enough to fight COVID? Well, maybe, maybe not, because if, if, if it's not just antibodies, there's a T cell response. It's a very aggressive, multifocal response from the vaccines. So, and again, your question, the question is, do I want to eliminate COVID to zero? That's gonna be really hard. When people, the you know, media talks about herd immunity, they're like, well, we're never gonna get herd immunity because we're never gonna eliminate COVID. It's like, yeah, okay, so? Do we eliminate the common cold? It sucks, but it's the common cold. That's what COVID will become eventually when, we protect the most vulnerable from the most severe disease. Then it becomes a like nasty cold that you get or a minimal cold or nothing. And it's just endemic with us season to season. It's seasonal, it's worse in the winter. I already established that with our big surge in, in the winter. And that's basically gonna, gonna, gonna be how it is. Now, Walensky was right about impending doom in the wrong country. So India, what's the difference? And I've done a show on this. The main difference is they don't have a significant percentage of their population vaccinated. And there was you know, overconfidence that they had innate immunity, but then the variants are different in the sense that they spread easier. They're more contagious, they're easier to catch, they probably generate higher viral loads, depending on the variant. And as a result, now you have this boom, right? This tragedy. So we ought to be focusing all of our attention on vaccinating as many willing people as we can. And so that was what I've been saying from when I saw the data and said, hey, this is actually works. And you saw me in January get my vaccine. Now, then it, so let's talk about two things about CDC. We're gonna talk about masking, but let's talk about the kids vaccine piece first because it, it relates to what I'm saying right now. So you see cases are now plummeting in the US. States are talking about opening up. The CDC finally comes out and says, A, you know, we'll talk about the mask thing. You can take your mask off if you're vaccinated indoors and outdoors. Let that settle in for a second. For months, we've been conditioned to fear going into a indoor facility without a mask. Like that's the end of the world, at least in the coasts where people are like, the sphincter tone is like a hundred newtons of pressure per square centimeter or sonometer if you're nasty. And it's, it's been like that. Now they're saying, well, no, actually, don't worry about it. No. Why, why would they do that? Let, let's, let's, let's think about that. 
the vaccines are so ridiculously effective. Now, just now they're saying, okay, well now it's the emergency use authorization has been expanded to kids 12 through 15. It was for Pfizer, it was 16 and up um, or 18 and up for Moderna, Johnson & Johnson. Okay, so it's now expanded to a significant portion of the population that you couldn't vaccinate before. Now, I did a video where I said quite clearly, ah, uh, this isn't a unambiguous slam dunk that it's necessary to vaccinate that population to achieve the outcome we want, which is not overwhelming hospitals, a whole bunch less deaths, and a pandemic that becomes endemic instead of pandemic. Um, if you want, and again, I think COVID zero is unreachable and I, I, I hope to be proven wrong. I think it's unreachable. So I, I thought, well, you know, the adverse experiences of having the vaccine, having to go two times, seeing the doctor, all that. And then, you know, is that outweighed by the benefit to kids, which is they don't get what typically for them is a little flu or a cold that doesn't usually kill them or give them MISC or something. Now, still several hundred kids have had this happen. So that's, that's, that we have to think about that. And people will say, oh, well, Z-Dog, when you say this, you're basically saying you don't care about dead children. That in, that in argument terms is what we call a straw man. It's where you take somebody's argument and you really do this to it and you put it over here and go, see, he's saying this, this little man made of straw. And let's attack how idiotic Z-Dog is and what a murderous thug, bald thug he is. That's not the way you think about this. You go, yeah, oh, any death of a child is bad, but you have to look at the benefit and risk to the whole population. Now, what's the risk? It's missing school from the um, side effects of the vaccine. It's the cost. It's the time to go, two shots, et cetera. So they're not the biggest costs in the world, right? And what's the benefit? Okay, the kids are, it's 100% effective in kids in the trial of 2,600 people, right? So there's a benefit, clearly, if you don't want your kid to get sick, and if you're that nervous that you think your kid would be one of those, maybe they're high risk who might die or get complications. Okay, then what about kids spreading it to other people? Well, yeah, they could do that. It's not as common as adults spreading it because they, they, don't just, they just don't seem to do it as aggressively, but they can. And then you have schools, which are cesspools, especially as the winter comes. So maybe vaccinating that population is good for the overall immunity. But the arguments that, oh, you're gonna protect unvaccinated people. Well, then go get vaccinated. Why do I need to protect you from being a dumbass? Go get vaccinated. If, 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 that's, if you're concerned about COVID, I totally respect your right not to get vaccinated. I don't think these things should be mandatory, right? With the information we have, it, is, you don't, it doesn't need to be. You can make a choice, you're an adult. Say, I, I decide I don't like the vaccine, I don't trust it, it's not been out for long enough yet, my intuition says it's bad. Okay, fine, cool. Then you gotta just take on yourself the small risk that you're gonna get COVID and the even smaller risk that you could die or give it to somebody else who could die who also made the same choice you made. So I don't think we need to be vaccinating kids to protect your ass. I think we need to be deciding with kids on a case by case, parent by parent basis based on what we think is best, right? What's our risk tolerance? What's our level of, and so for me, and then, and then the question, what all that extra vaccine, like couldn't we be sending it to India instead of vaccinating lower risk populations in the US? Of course, we don't do that because we're America. So I had a talk with my wife and my 13 year old and I said, hey, what do you guys wanna do? What, let's do all the math here and think about it. Is, is there a risk to you from this vaccine? No, but you might feel bad for a, a day or two, right? And you gotta do it twice, okay. I gotta take time, go take you there. That's no big deal, right? So we've been in the pandemic forever. That's cool. So that math works out for us. What's the benefit? Well, you're gonna see my elderly parents, both of whom are vaccinated, but they're frail enough that if any of you guys are a vaccine failure and have COVID, well, there's a very small chance they could get sick and a even smaller chance they could die. Okay, so there is the benefit there. It's gonna dramatically reduce even that already tiny risk. I mean, minuscule risk, but it's there, it's not zero. So from an emotional standpoint, you feel a little more comfortable. What about school? Well, you're gonna feel much more comfortable going to school and kind of not even you know, taking your mask off, which they should have taken off kids a little while ago, but that's okay. You're gonna feel more comfortable. The teachers are vaccinated. It's crazy that the teachers now technically don't have to wear masks according to CDC guidance, but the kids do. Just let that sink in for a second. 
who are we protecting? Other kids? Most of the kids are gonna be okay. Like we don't do this for flu, which is not COVID, but as far as kids go, it's COVID's maybe a little worse, maybe for kids. So I don't know. And so you gotta think about these things. You can't just like carte blanche. And it's so tribalized that if I even say that, suddenly like the left attacks me. And then if I say, you know, this was the decision we made for my kid, my 13 year old. We went this morning to Kaiser Permanente here because they were doing it um, for anybody who signed up on kp.org. And uh, my friends work there. I, I love those guys. I said, they said, hey, we got slots. I went, she wanted to do it. My wife agreed. We're gonna be going to Hawaii. We're gonna be traveling, these kind of things. Let's get her vaccinated. Then I have my nine-year-old who can't be vaccinated and that's fine. So she does, we do the usual risk calculation for very young kids, which is not high risk. And we're just all feeling a little better about it. So she got it. I put the video out and then the right attacks me. You are sterilizing your daughter. I hope you don't want grandkids. Like that's literally what they say. And I'm laughing and my daughter's looking at it laughing. And it's like, that's just how we are tribalized. Janie O, thank you for the $50 super chat on YouTube. Wow. Um, and so we made that decision. I live streamed it because I do want to set an example of how you make the decisions. I did the video about what I think about it. I'm not, I'm ambivalent slightly. I think you can make your own decision based on the information at hand. I don't think we need to mandate it. I don't think we should mandate it. But what I saw at this vaccination center was tons of people with their parents, super excited to do their part for the broader community. Again, it's a small part because it's these kids, but still, so you weigh all those things, the tension between autonomy, your body, your emotions and your fear, and the, your sense of being part of something bigger, which is the community, which if vaccines for kids maybe doesn't really help the individual kid that much, maybe it helps society in some way. Even just by setting an example that, hey, these kids are braver than you, old man. They got their vaccine. What the hell are you doing? You're actually high risk. Do you really believe the 12 people, there was just an article on this, that 12 people on Facebook and these uh, social media platforms that are responsible for the vast majority of cuckoo anti-vax stuff. Just let that settle in for a second. It's like Mercola, Sherry Tenpenny, that crazy um, Aaron Marie woman that I had debunked her like attack on Elmer's hospital early in the pandemic. Like some other people I've never heard of. I'm like, who the hell are you? Robert F. Kennedy Jr., he's a lawyer. Um, they're the ones who spread, oh, this thing has got nanobots. Oh, this thing's gonna sterilize you. Oh, this thing, is, it, it's all lies. <laughs> it's all not, it's just not true. And when you show that it's not true, millions of people get vaccinated, none of these problems, right? And they go, oh, but look at VAERS, the Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting System. It's like, oh yeah, okay, I did. A bunch of people died after getting the vaccine. Guess what? A bunch of people would have died if they hadn't gotten the vaccine, same thing, because they were older and deaths happen anyway. So that's called correlation, not causation. And believe me, everybody's looking at those deaths because they are looking for patterns. That's how they found this incredibly rare syndrome of deep venous thrombosis and unusual cavernous sinus thrombosis in the Johnson & Johnson crowd and the AstraZeneca crowd after mass vaccination. And guess what? They caught it. It's exceedingly rare <laughs> and they caught it. And here's something you need to understand if you're on the fence. I don't know the long-term effects of the vaccine. We have never had a vaccine that we've been able to document long-term effects. Like the adverse events that happen and they can happen, happen within days to weeks after the vaccine. They don't happen months and years like the 12 anti-vaxxers. Think about that, 12 rogue cult members who make money, by the way, by selling herbal solutions and naturopathic treatments and books. And you know, like Mercola sells tanning beds to increase your vitamin D, that's a good idea. Um, and all this other stuff, they're controlling us. Like thousands of scientists, right? Who say, oh no, actually we've looked at the data, it's pretty good. So in the end, you gotta make your own choice for your own kids. And I'm actually, again, as much as I love vaccines, I didn't think it was a slam dunk to go run and get your kid the vaccine, but my daughter wanted it. We did the calculation for ourselves and we said, this is good. Joseph Gonzalez, thank you for the super chat um, on 
Facebook, I mean, on YouTube and Ed as well. Ed says, hey, Z-Dog, I'm happy things are getting better in America. In Brazil, we vaccinated most elders, so death rates are slowly going down, but I'm kind of hopeless still. Do you think there's any hope for South America? Let's talk about this. So we are riddled with a contagion that's sometimes worse than the virus, and that's called fear. And in Brazil, you guys had such a hard time that the fear component is very hard to unwind. So let's get back now to the CDC and vaccines uh, and masks, and let's talk about Brazil. So Brazil, you guys have the Brazilian variant. You have a population that was kind of primed to have an explosion of infection. Your vaccines, I think, are the Sinopharm and AstraZeneca. I'm not sure if you guys are doing the mRNA vaccines. I'm not 100% sure, so you'll have to check me on that. Um, but I will say this, 100% there's hope. There's hope everywhere because once we vaccinate and or get naturally infected, because that's the other way to get immunity, right? And that immunity may not be as robust as the vaccine, but it's immunity. It may not be that resistant to the variants, but still, you're probably less likely to die of a secondary infection. You may get reinfected, but you're not gonna get hospitalized or die, most likely, right? And again, there's no absolute rules here. It's a spectrum of risk. So the end of this thing is coming, Ed. It is, it is. And I know you guys have been suffering, um, but it's coming. And vaccines are a key part of it. And like you said, this is what happened in UK. They vaccinated their elders first, their highest risk population, and deaths declined rapidly. Cases did not because young people then get infected. But guess what? They don't typically die, but they do. So this is the thing. There are 20 somethings coming back from India who are have complete whiteout and are on ECMO because they got infected while in India. I mean, this is real. So there are, again, and it depends. Are you, do you have a lot of inflammation? Do you have metabolic syndrome? Are you obese? Do you have diabetes? Those kind of things put you at risk no matter what your age is. So you, you think about those things. Um, Rose uh, Hodge says, thank you for calling out Mercola. These people are, listen, there's a thing that you do online where you call people evil and you, make, you immediately make a Nazi reference and you start doing all that and you've already lost the argument. These people are incentivized to tell you these things about vaccines that the vast majority of scientists, including myself, do not, are, it's not even close to being true. And they use all the misinformation tactics, fake experts, Sherry Tenpenny. Is she an immunologist? I'm not an immunologist, but I, I slept in a Holiday Inn last night. I'm not an immunologist, but I get immunologists on my show, Peter Hotez, Paul Offit, and they'll teach you. Sherry Tenpenny's like a failed ER doc who now sells like courses on how to be an anti-vaxxer. Mercola's been doing this gig, and this is the thing about Mercola. There's some of the stuff that Mercola says about other things about uh, medicine that are true, right? We over intervene. We don't think about nutrition and diet and stress and meditation and mind-body connection. Uh, way to go, Mercola but not taking vaccines? What is wrong with you, buddy? When did you become a vaccinologist? Jeez, and it says 12 people. Um, Ed from Brazil says, we should get 100 million doses from Pfizer until September. Also 38 million doses from Johnson. Thanks for responding, I really love your show. Listen, I'm so glad to hear that. Because again, I think now we have to think about the globe because nothing is, nothing is local anymore. Everything is kind of, interconnected as we know, because the thing started in Wuhan. By the way, so early on, talk about like having to look at your beliefs. Like, I, and I've said this before, I was like, no, there's no way this thing was made in the lab. The scientists say it wasn't like, you know, the WHO went there, why would they lie? Well, take the conspiracy component out of it because that's a sign of misinformation when you have to invoke conspiracies. But go, okay, could this happen? There's some pretty good theories about how, if it wasn't created in the lab to study mutations that you know jump to humans and so on and it accidentally escaped. It's not like it's a bioweapon. It's like, this is why they study it. Or they were like in a cave trying to get samples of bat poo to look for bat coronaviruses and someone got infected and so on. That's entirely plausible. Why does it matter? Not so that we can go inflict racist violence on the Chinese, right? Which apparently some people do, which why? Um, but so that we can prevent it from happening again. I don't know about you guys, but this pandemic effing sucked. Like, I don't want another one for a hundred years. And by then we'll have, you know, we have the singularity and we'll all be living in a computer. That doesn't happen because um, consciousness is fundamental. All right, so that being said, let's come back to the fear component and the CDC and their mask recommendations. All right, 
So the CDC now says, eh, forget all that stuff we said about having to be good when you vaccinate. Mass off, son, vax on, max off, Mr. Miyagi. By the way, if you have not seen the reboot, Cobra Kai of the Karate Kid series, you are missing one of the great joys of Gen X life. Um, that being said, back to masks. They said, go ahead, vaccinated people, take your mask off outdoors and indoors. How are we gonna test that? Meh, honor system. So what are they really saying? What they're really saying is, go get vaccinated if you wanna feel good about taking your mask off. Otherwise, we're not gonna check if you take your mask off. Because if you're unvaccinated and you don't wear a mask, hopefully the vaccinated people protect you a little, but if you get COVID, well, that's kind of on you because the other people you're gonna infect are the other liars who don't have their mask on and said they got vaccinated but didn't. So, meh. That's really what they're saying. And you know what? I'm cool with that. I think we should have our masks off. Now, but here's what happens. Here's what happens. We are terrified in many parts of the country. Some parts of the country, like Texas, you think they care? Hell no. <laughs> I don't think they ever wore masks. I'm exaggerating. But here, like in California, like I'm walking around the street, CDC made its guidelines. I don't have a mask on. Everybody else is giving me the stink eye. Like I'm a contagion. It's probably because I'm bald and brown. But apart from that, by the way, the Bay Area people are the biggest racists in the world. They're the most overtly woke and they're the biggest freaking racist. Like, I'm just gonna tell you that right now. Bay Area people, do you feel me on this? Am I right? Um, they see race first, like race and then everything else. It's like a little computer in their head. <laughs> Categorized. Um, God, I love taking a crap on my home. Um, they are so afraid, right? That now when you, you know, people are terrified, like even if, if the CDC, and remember the tribalization of this was, well, follow the science, the CDC says, right? And then now it's like, no, the CDC is wrong. How can we, my mask. And look, you can't blame people. They've been traumatized. They've been terrified for how long? And now you're telling them like that, flip a switch, take it off. No, let's not judge anybody. Let everybody do their thing. This is gonna unwind, but it's gonna be a really rocky, turbulent course for a bit as people start to realize, oh, it's safe. It's like dip your toe in the water, it's cool. No one's dying, hospitals aren't full, media's not instilling panic. They, they say the variant word only QOD instead of every day. Okay, cool. I think that's what's gonna happen. And people can then make rational decisions. Like if you're nervous, if you have a, a low risk tolerance, if you're at high risk, by all means wear a mask. I think it's actually good that we have a culture now that accepts mask wearing. Like if you're sick, like what if you're sick? Put a mask on so you don't make other people sick. Dude, that's awesome. They do it in Japan, they've done it for years. It works. Yeah, and I did a show on why flu disappeared. It's multifactorial, but a part of it is, well, we close schools, we stop travel, there's viral interference. It's also because we mask distance, wash hands, which we don't normally do. So all these things do kind of help on some level, but masks also hurt on another level. We're ruining emotional recognition, people who are hard of hearing get hurt. It is an inf infliction on our freedom. It really is. I wanna go outside without having a piece of fabric on my face. Humans didn't evolve to put fabric on their face. Now, I'll get all kinds of crap from people like, well, in my country, we put fabric on my face. All right, fine, put fabric on your face. But we don't do it here. We're not adapted to it. I don't see the reason to continue it a second longer than it's necessary. And yeah, we're gonna see the ERs fill up with RSV and influenza and that's, look, hopefully they'll take the same mRNA technology and develop a more aggressive and robust flu shot. Now the difference with flu and COVID, just so y'all know and we've talked about before is that flu has a very short incubation period. So even if you're vaccinated, you don't have enough time to spin up an immu a memory immune response before you start viral replicating and so you get behind the eight ball. With, with That's partially why flu shot is not as effective now measles, you have this long incubation period, so you have plenty of time to spin up an immune response, which is why measles vaccination, we've been using the same one, even though measles is an RNA, RNA virus, we're using the same one against the same virus from the 50s. Never had to change it because measles has like days of incubation. So you have plenty of time to spin up enough antibody response to sterilize measles, which is why you need a high level of uh, immunity in the population because if measles is so contagious and you're, you're asymptomatic for so long that it spreads so quickly that you need a lot of people to be vaccinated to reach a threshold before the thing dies out. 
Well, COVID is somewhere in between. So it's just enough time of incubation that you can spin up enough of an immune response to not get very sick, which is brilliant. Um, Michelle on uh, YouTube says, how about Northrop? Thanks for calling her out. Oh, crap. She was on the list. Christiane Northrop. I've called her out so many times. I keep calling her Christine Northrop because I get her name wrong because I don't want to remember her name because her behavior, I'm not saying she, her behavior is terrible uh, because she comes off as an expert. She's an obstetrician. How is that an expert on vaccines? What vaccines are you giving? Like maybe HPV, maybe? Come on, dude. Um, she's selling books and selling garbage and selling her brand. Like I am, I'm doing it too. I mean, I'm asking you for paypal.me forward slash ZDogMD to support the show if you like it. And if you leave a comment there, I'll respond personally by email. Um, but we all need to make a living to support what we're doing. But Christian, could you make your living not mm, spreading lies all the time? Like that would be just nice. So she's one of the, the 12 apostles of doom. Um, Amy Pfaff says, I'm a COVID survivor and ran to get in line for the vaccine. I can't lose any more organs. Amy, so this is the thing. If you've had COVID, you can get vaccinated and you'll get more robust immunity probably, but you don't have to run to get it unless you're high risk, which it sounds like you are. It sounds like you didn't do well. So, and I hope you're doing better. So it's a personal decision. Right? There isn't a, you can't paint it with a one size fits all. It's not like MMR vaccination where you gotta say, well, listen, we need 95% of the population to prevent measles outbreaks in people who can't be vaccinated because some people cannot get live attenuated vaccines like MMR for medical reasons. And so you could murder another child by not vaccinating your child, manslaughter. It's not murder because there's no intent. Um, you could manslaughter, you could child slaughter another child by giving them measles, having them have a complication and die because they're medically fragile because you decided your kid was gonna um, ride along with on the herd immunity of others. So that's why I think kids' vaccines like that, I take a very different stance. But for this stuff, it's like, hey, dude, make a decision. You're an adult, you're a kid, make a decision together. It's not the end of the world because in this case, it is a personal accountability. All right, I don't wanna get COVID. All right, get the vaccine. I got COVID, I don't think I want the vaccine. Cool, okay, you kinda unlikely to get sick again, but if you do, then you made the decision. Cool, awesome. Pfizer's making billions, they're minting money from this thing, right? which is the one time I'm at, I don't begrudge pharma billions of dollars in profit because it's like, well, you may just well have ended this pandemic along with Moderna and Johnson and Johnson and all, all of them. Um, I'm team Moderna because that's what I got. That's what was available at the time. Um, let's see, where are we at on the Facebook side? Thanks for all the people sending stars on Facebook to support our show. Um, we're seeing more RSV with kiddos, says Shirley Ann. Yeah, so it is gonna come back. It'll come back in the fall or whenever the RSV season is, uh, winter, I forget exactly because I'm not a pediatrician, but I play one. I, I slept at a Holiday Inn Express last night. By the way, I miss Doc Vader, Deborah Leet. So Deborah, I was this freaking, where is it? I put the helmet away. Um, I was this freaking close because I just recorded a Doc Vader skit. I was this freaking close to doing this show as Doc Vader, but then I thought it might get a little too dark side. Um, but he is pretty, he's pretty awesome. Um, so this is what I think. Um, we're not gonna be able to see who's been vaccinated and not. Vaccine passports were a dumb idea. And as I've said before, I'm not for vaccine passports. Notice how it just kind of dried up. Nobody cares anymore. Get vaccinated or don't. Take your masks off, depending on what you think your risk is. If you're still nervous and you've been vaccinated, you wanna wear a mask, great. I think on transport, I think masks are still a good idea. I really do. Because those are tight little spaces and, um, you know, you're kind of forced to use it. It's like, okay, let's continue to do what CDC says there. And that will change when cases get low enough. Um, and that's it. Now, Faten Ben says, hello, are you aware of what happened in the Seychelles? 60% are fully vaccinated since January. 90% had their first shot. They opened borders March 26th. They're now dancing with a new wave of contagion. 30% of cases are uh, people fully vaccinated. Yes, I did. And I talked about it the other day. This is an interesting situation because they are cases we don't know how severe the illness is. Second, they're not using the mRNA vaccines. They're using, I believe it's um, AstraZeneca and then Sinopharm, the Chinese. I forget exactly which, or was it the Russian? I forget, but it's not the, the um, mRNA vaccine. So we have different vaccine, different population. 10% of the people infected were tourists. Um, and the there was a percentage of people who were vaccinated who got infected. Now remember, what's the efficacy of the AstraZeneca vaccine, 75% across populations. 
So is that that surprising? Tourists bring it in, those guys get infected. But here's the question, how sick are they getting? Are they having severe disease and getting hospitalized or dying in ICUs? That's what I would like to know. And I haven't seen that data. Um, so I don't think Seychelles tells us, oh, vaccines don't work. You can look at Israel. So Israel, they used aggressive mRNA vaccines. 60% of the population got vaccinated. Their cases are like, they had like a couple deaths in a day. Like it's ridiculous. Um, and the breakthrough cases are the variants that are a little more contagious, but they're still like, it's not like people are dying of it. They're just, oh, I tested positive or I had some mild symptoms. That's what you want. You're not gonna eliminate COVID. I just don't think it's gonna happen. I think that's a pipe dream. Like sterilizing herd immunity where we get to a herd point where there's no COVID circulating. I, I think it's hard, I'm hard pressed to believe that. I don't know that other coronaviruses would do that, you know? Um, these are good, these are actually very good comments, you guys. Um, and according to Dr. Tenpenny, uh, I'll be dead in two to three years. I had the Johnson & Johnson shot, I do regret it. Uh, Trish DeFranco. So I, I don't know if you're joking or not, um, but this is what Tenpenny does. When her initial predictions that everyone's gonna be sterile, they're gonna have miscarriages all over the place, and they're gonna have 5G reception and aluminum nanoparticles that uh, activate coronavirus. So more coronavirus from aluminum activation of nanoparticles from 5G. When that didn't pan out, she did what all misinformation peddlers do, move the goalposts. That's another sign of misinformation. So she said, oh no, actually give it two to three years, you'll be dead. It, it's absurd. <laughs> like you're gonna believe one of 12 idiots online, right? And I get it, I know why, because she hits you right here, it feels right. She looks like your mom, she talks to you. I'm a doctor, fake expert and I'm gonna move the goalposts, I'm gonna talk about conspiracies, I'm definitely selling something, I'm gonna use logical fallacies, I'm gonna cherry pick data. That's what we do, us 12 apostles of idiocy. Um, thank you for the stars, Debbie Lee Davis. That's a beautiful name, by the way. Um, so, um, by the way, people are like, Star Wars Day, I was looking for Doc Vader. I did a whole Doc Vader nurses day song that was like May 6th. And uh, it got like no views. Like people were like, meh. And, they're, and then they're always telling me, I want Vader, I want Vader. Then I do Vader for you guys. We produced this big song. I do it and you guys are like, meh. I, I guess it sucked. I guess people don't wanna see Doc Vader singing. <laughs> um, all right, so that's, okay, Duck Man, what are your thoughts on Ivermectin? I'm tired of hearing about it. Every day some cuckoo like messages me about ivermectin. Look, there's data, go look at it, go. Review the data, make a decision. I personally, from the data I've looked at, I don't, it, maybe it works a little. It's not a miracle drug. The randomized trial that I saw didn't show a benefit. Why are we talking about ivermectin? I mean, sure, in the third world, let them take ivermectin. It hadn't helped much. Um, like India, they were going, the ivermectin mafia was like, hey, India, Look, see, it's doing really well, ivermectin. And it's just, it's just like on, uh, on SpongeBob. 12 seconds later, they're out of oxygen. There's no ambulances, there's no beds. People are dying in the streets, funeral pyres. So I don't know the answer about ivermectin. I'm open to being convinced, but I'm tired of people just sending me 30 different poorly done trials in various countries and saying, look, um, and I get it because it's very appealing to wanna to believe that that's the answer. Just like it was appealing to believe that hydroxychloroquine was the answer early on. And um, to some degree, it's been tribalized as well, ivermectin. It's like people who don't wanna get vaccinated or don't believe in whatever, they're like, well, here's an anti-parasitic, anti-worm drug that you know, may work and has this theoretical benefit. And here's some observational studies and here's some you know, non-US randomized control trials that if you look at them, you're like, well, this, this is confounded by all kinds of stuff. Um, and maybe it still works, I don't know. But um, I know what does work. You know what I'm gonna say, vaccines. Um, could ivermectin be a placebo, meow, doc, dick? Well, if you did a, if you did a or tick, sorry, I didn't mean to call you dick. Um, if, if you do a placebo controlled trial, then you f control for that, then you can control. But yeah, of course, an observational trial, there's so many confounders in an observational trial. 
It's like, oh, these guys who did got ivermectin did better. Okay, were they already healthier? Did they have other care that they actually got ivermectin because they were getting other care that was really good? Was there some other part of their disease that predicted that they would get ivermectin that meant they'd have a better course? There's a million different reasons, right? But, you know, and there's a lot of docs that are looking at it. So let them look at it. But then the problem is then they go and do a press conference. It's like, well, that, that's not how we do science last time I checked. So go and like, if you look, okay. Look at the stuff that we know kind of does work, dexamethasone, randomized control trial. It's cheap. There's no pharma influence here. It crushes the game. We use it, right? Remdesivir, meh, but we use it because, you know, uh, some trial data, it's a little bit better. Okay, cool. We use it. We use whatever we think can work, but we're not widespread using ivermectin. So is that because of a conspiracy? Like the, the, I, I, I don't know. I get frustrated, guys. I do. Um, that's all it is. Joanne Costanza liked my Vader song. Thank you, one person. Like, I do a rant like this. It gets more engagement than spending, like, months working on a song. So I just stopped doing songs because I'm like, this is heartbreaking. Every time I put a song out, no one cares anymore. It used to be. <laughs> you liked it when I did the music. And now it's like, no. And I'm like, you know. I've lost my mind. So you're saying COVID survivors should um, not be forced out of society if they opt not to get vaccinated? If so, thank you very much. If not, okay. Uh, the FTM22 on YouTube. No, I'm saying, of course, exactly that. I think it's crazy that we're immunity deniers, that we're saying that if you had COVID, you don't have immunity at all to coronavirus. That's just not true. Um, it's just not true. So follow the science, follow science. Think from an alt-middle perspective. Don't be married to any belief. Don't hold your belief so dear that it blinds you to new evidence, right? Um, and recognize when you have a bias and try to see if you can listen to countering opinions. This is another sign of misinformation. You will never see a well-articulated argument in misinformation for the other side. So they'll, they'll never be like, well, okay, so here's what the pro-vax people are saying about this. They're saying this and this. It's based on this data. They cite this trial. They cite this trial. They cite this trial. I'm saying, I think these trials are flawed for these reasons. Here's the data I have. And I think their points here are countered by this point and this point and this point. They never say that. They never say that. I'll say this a third time. They never say that. And that's how you know they have no clue how to do science. All right, that's all I got today, guys. Um, vax on, mask off. Vaxing your kids, your choice. I've kind of said my piece about it and I don't have a strong feeling. I vaccinated my daughter. I put it on video out today on YouTube and Twitter and Instagram. And uh, that's it. I think this thing is, I keep saying this. I've been saying this. By the way, Marty McCary, who got all kinds of crap for saying like we're gonna be you know, pretty much at herd immunity by the end of April. Well, it's like now midway through May and it's not herd immunity, but like we're there. I mean, we're, we're the cases are in a, in a place that we're not panicked in the street, we're opening up. So I don't think Marty was fully wrong on that, but his piece in the Wall Street Journal was branded by Facebook as misinformation. Like, thanks Facebook scientists. How, how does that feel? How does it feel CDC did that impending, impending doom thing work out? How does it feel, Facebook, for censoring Marty's article when he wasn't wrong, really? You could bicker about what the definition of herd immunity is. It's a moving target, whatever. But we just ought to be able to talk about science instead of just tribalizing, politicizing, and throwing feces at each other. That's all. That's all I'm saying. Love each other, dog. Am I canceled yet? Why is my focus not working? Eh, eh. All right, guys. I love you so much. I'm gonna fade this thing to black and we are out. Peace.